my name is Nicole and today I want to talk about this beautiful book A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. This is the second book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series, the first book being A Court of Thorns and Roses. If you have not read the first book I highly recommend it. It is a high fantasy beauty and the beast retelling, lots of great romance, lots of fun sexy times, and this is the sequel. It is more of a Hades and Persephone kind of thing. This picks up three months after A Court of Thorns and Roses left off and we are dealing with sort of the relationship related aftermath of the end of A Court of Thorns and Roses. So like the political stuff we'll deal with later in the book but right now we're sort of just focusing on the relationship between Tamlin and Feyre. Now that Feyre is Fae and they get there happily ever after, right? Question mark? And then there's also the drama of the fact that three months after they escaped under the mountain, Rhysand is now here to claim his side of the bargain. Feyre has to spend a week with him in the night court every single month. Tamlin's not too happy about that. So that's sort of where we are in the story. I loved this. Quick warning, um, trigger warning for discussions of rape and PTSD. Uh, and then also just like a content warning. This is definitely the most not safe for work uh, of Sarah J Mass's books. Lots and lots of relatively explicit sexy times. So if you are someone who is not comfortable with reading that, maybe don't pick this one up. This book is being marketed as young adult, but I would say content wise, it's probably closer to new adult when it comes to the sex. But like I said, I absolutely loved this. I always forget how just like emotionally painful Sarah J Mass books are but this tore my heart out and then put it back together and then tore it out again and again and again. It was beautiful. I loved getting to know Resand more and I loved seeing the development of him and Feyre's dynamic so I, I just think this was an absolutely fantastic installment in this series. Is this a trilogy or a longer series? I'm not quite sure. Someone let me know in the comments. You know there's often that sort of second book syndrome where the second book just kind of feels like a filler. This definitely did not feel like a filler book. It was so good. I loved it. I am so intrigued to see where this series goes next. We also met a lot of really interesting new characters in this book, some of which I started off being kind of like, ah, so many new characters, can't keep track of them all, but I fell in love with each and every one of them. They're so great. Moore is my fave. I just want to be her best friend forever and ever and ever. I also loved getting to see the Night Court a little bit more because in the previous book we really only got to see the Spring Court and we get to explore some more of this realm in this book and that was a lot of fun. I give it 5 out of 5 stars. If you have not picked it up yet, do it. It is so good. I read it like basically all in one day. Sarah J Mass's writing is so addicting. I highly recommend this series to anyone who loves high fantasy. It's amazing. Alright, so now I'm going to get a little bit more spoilery. So if you have not read A Court of Mist and Fury yet, go come back when you've finished it and we can chat. Okay, so for spoilery stuff, First of all, I just want to appreciate the fact that some of the theories that I and I heard some other people thinking about and talking about from the end of A Court of Thorns and Roses were true. The sort of shock that Rhysand got at the end on that like balcony was the like mate bond like snapping into place and it was so good. Oh my god, all the mate stuff between Rhys and Feyre was just beautiful. I loved it so much and I loved the sort of build of their relationship. And it was the kind of thing where like throughout the entire book Sarah J Mass was just taunting us with this sexual tension and then it was when it was finally released it was so worth the wait. So so worth the wait. Their flirting is just A plus. So cute. I am jealous of their relationship. It's just so like mutually supportive and mutually loving. When I first started reading this, I was kind of like on the fence as to whether I liked Tamlin or Reese more because I ended the last book generally on Tamlin's side, but I could see how Reese could definitely grow to be a better love interest. 
and as the year progressed I sort of got a little bit more 50-50 then basically as soon as we saw Tamlin in this and saw he, how he was treating Farah, I was like no not not gonna support that that's an asshole move no resand all the way and ugh oh. They're just so cute together. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the Warner Juliet Adam triangle from Shatter Me in that you have the girl who sort of falls for like the first guy who like she really gets to spend time with and like hang out with and get to know and then there's sort of this bad guy who like once you actually learn his backstory and learn what's going on, all the like bad things he was doing actually make perfect sense and you realize that he was just doing it to like protect people and then like they actually build a really good like healthy strong relationship and it just it made me happy because Rhysan is a babe! I also really really loved all of Rhysan's like court and his friends Morrigan is fantastic. I love her. I want to be her best friend. She's adorable and peppy and I just like she's been through so much shit and yet she's still such a genuinely good person. But like she's also not afraid to kick your ass if she needs to and I love her so much. And then with Asriel and Cassian, I mean they're just adorable and wonderful and I want to hug them and be best friends with them. Just like that entire crew is just squad goals. And then Night Court sounded so beautiful. Like I want to hang out there. That sounds amazing. And then can we just like take a second to talk about that last like the last half of the third section. Obviously when they were going in to like try and break the cauldron or whatever, like I knew something was gonna go wrong. Cause like it's not the last book in the series, so they can't just like break the thing and be done with it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, we're all done, yay! Obviously something was gonna go wrong. And like I was terrified cause I was like, is someone gonna die? Like please don't let like Reese and die. There were a number of moments where I was terrified Reese was gonna die. Did not expect that. Did not expect Tamlin there, cause like, what the fuck? I started swearing at my book and I think I freaked out my roommates. Cause I was just like, Tamlin was such a good guy in the first book. And it, his dynamic with Feyre in this book was, he wasn't intentionally antagonistic. He was just overprotective and he was coping with his trauma in a very different way than Feyre was and they just weren't compatible. I mean, he wasn't trying to hurt her, he wasn't being like villainous. And we first got a little bit of a hint of that when Lucian found her in the woods and there was that whole debacle, but it wasn't until he showed up there that I'm like, fuck you're crazy. And I'm really hoping Lucian comes to his senses or something later on because I've always loved him and it really makes me upset that he's being a dick right now. But when Lucian and Hamlin showed up in that like court thing, whatever it was, I stopped breathing. I was so mad and I was crying when they were doing the thing with Nyssa and Elaine and who the fuck saw that Elaine and Lucian thing coming? Like what? Back in the first book, when they were sort of talking about like Lucian drama, relationship drama, I was like, oh, what if we like find Lucian's bait at some point? But did not call that. I was thinking maybe there could be a potential like Cassian Nesta kind of thing, but could never in a million years have called Lucian an Elaine. That is so weird. I am very curious as to what they will do with that cause like what the fuck. And then the real like bawling my eyes out tears. I think we all know when that happened. Um, the whole break the bond thing. I am so upset just thinking about it makes me want to cry again. I was so worried. Obviously like I knew that she didn't really like want to break the bond. Like she still loved him, but I was so scared for them and I am so relieved that like they still have their mate bond because that was adorable. And the moment when they revealed she was high lady, I was like, ah, yay, thank God. Although it seems like Tamlin's probably going to find out at some point. She can't just wear gloves for the next like however long consistently. That seems like maybe it would get suspicious. But just everything about this book I am so in love with and I am basically just metaphorically on the edge of my seat 
dying to know what happens in the third book. This left off in such an interesting place. I don't know, I just have a lot of emotions and thoughts about this and I'm finding it a little bit difficult to articulate everything I'm feeling. So please, please talk to me about it in the comments and we can have whole discussions. I just am having trouble trying to organize my thoughts and get them out of my mouth in a way that makes sense. So let's talk in the comments. Uh, let me know what you thought. Like I said, I gave this five out of five stars. It was so good. This may be my favorite Sarah J Mass book yet, but let me know what you think. I love you and I'll see you later. Bye.